Hey everybody and welcome to BK's Bullets. Today we are reviewing Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. It's been a little while. I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the video we put up in the last uh, couple of weeks. Today we're going to review Spider-Man Homecoming. I know this is a little late out of the gate, but you know, I'm doing other things and I'm not exactly running out on Thursday night to go see movies. I haven't done that ever. I was doing like Friday nights for a while, but I mean, family, priorities, all this stuff changed. So well, here we are a week later. I finally saw Spider-Man Homecoming and I want to let you know my thoughts. You know, first of all, I really enjoyed this. I am glad that Spider-Man is back in the Marvel Universe. He is part of the Avengers. He's part of that whole family of, the, you know, all the characters. I got my Spider-Man shirt on. Even though it's the amazing logo, it's still a better logo than the itty-bitty spider they gave uh, the Marvel Universe Spider-Man. But, you know, hey, whatever. Representing, no matter what. So, I'm glad Spider-Man's back in the, in the Spider-Man Universe. I really feel... Or he's back in the Marvel Universe, not the Spider-Man Universe. I really feel like the character, you know, Marvel was right all along. Everybody that's been saying this the last, you know, 17 years was right all along. Spider-Man, you know, sometimes needs the other characters in the Marvel Universe to thrive and really show and excel what makes him Spider-Man. So, you know, I want to get to the things I loved in this movie. I love Tom Holland. Um, he was a great little bit in the Civil War movie, but I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to like him as Spider-Man or not, or as Peter Parker. I mean, he only really had like, you know, three or four minutes of screen time with his face, and then everything else was just voice work. And of course, that was really, you know, written to make him really punchy and things like that, so that you would you would want to like him in Homecoming, and that's exactly what they set him up to be, you know, in, in the Spider-Man Homecoming. So, all that said... He did a great job in this movie. I really, really liked him, and uh, I think he will be a great addition to the the Spider-Man lineage of actors, so to speak. You know, you got Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, who I think was a better Peter Parker than Tobey Maguire, and you got Tom Holland, who one movie in I think is going to surpass all of them. Um, I think the fact that he's a very young actor helps. I don't know if he's old enough to drink in the states. I don't know if he's 20 or 21, um, but he's very, very young. So they're you know unlike. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, when they got those guys there, I want to say they were like 27, 28, you know, pushing 30. If they had turned 30 by the time the first movie came out, that's probably uh, what happened. So here you had grown men like myself, you know, I'm 30, I'm turning 31 in August here, and I am not fit to play a high schooler. I have not been in that mindset for many, many years. And the actors did a good job in past films of, of portraying that. The Amazing Spider-Man series, I think, being the best one of that high school feeling, but Spider-Man Homecoming took that idea of Spider-Man in high school and turned it up to 11. Now, I like Spider-Man. I don't feel like he has to be in high school all the freaking time. Uh, it seems like Marvel has decided that Spider-Man needs to be in high school for him to be Spider-Man, or he has to be young, or he can't be married. I, I spent... 30 minutes on Wednesday telling my buddy Harry at work exactly how one more day happened and how Spider-Man's marriage dissolved or got wiped away by Mephisto, the Marvel Universe version of the devil, uh, just so that Marvel could have Spider-Man be unmarried and single but without him getting a divorce or killing MJ or cheating on MJ or anything like that that other people would look down upon. So let's get back to Spider-Man Homecoming. His friend, Ned, I think we all know his... Uh, I'm assuming his last name is Ned Leeds. I don't remember if it was said in the movie or not, but that actor did an amazing job just being the best friend. The guy in the chair, I really like that part. It seems like everybody's got a guy in the chair. You know, Batman in the last movie had Alfred in the chair in the last couple movies. Um, you know, the whole thing about Arrow's got a guy in a chair. Flash has a whole bunch of guys in a chair. Um, we'll see if Black Lightning TV series uh, this year has the guy in the chair. So. That was a really interesting wrinkle uh, to add to him. And he was he was interesting, and it was a fun way for him to get out, like, the exposition about how he got his spiders. If this is your first Spider-Man movie, it was a neat way to just, you know, have, like, that, you know, lightning lightning strike of information. Like, how'd you get your powers? Bitten by a spider. Did the spider die? It's dead. Can you do this? Can you do that? No, 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 no. Um, so that was really fun. He was a good addition. 
Um, Liz Allen, I, I don't remember the actress's name, you know, pretty good job. And it was nice to have a, uh, a romantic interest that wasn't necessarily a damsel in distress. This morning, while I was um, getting ready and stuff like that, I was I came across the um, the Honest trailers for the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, and it basically laid out like uh, you know Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane just got into incident after incident after incident after incident. She was constantly the damsel in distress. Um, so it was nice to have a, a romantic interest that Spider-Man didn't have to save necessarily. And in essence, spoiler alert, he messed up her life. Um, I did not see that coming, by the way. So I had managed to stay uh, relatively non-spoiled for all of Spider-Man Homecoming. And when that part came, and I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to talk about it or not, um, when, you <laughs> when he picks her up for, from the date, you know, for a homecoming date, um, man, oh man, my jaw dropped. So I was so glad that uh, none of that stuff was in the trailers or wasn't in the reviews. And I was, in fact, I was amazed how much stuff they managed to keep away from from the trailers and stuff like that. Like the last third act of the film, not in the trailers at all, which was a nice surprise. Um, honestly, I had no idea that uh, that we were going to a homecoming dance in this. Um, other, it was tipped off a little bit with my friend Ian. I was talking to him uh, on podcasting the other week, and uh, he said that you know he hopes the next one is called Spider Man Prom or Spider Man like Spring Fling or Winter Dance or whatever, and that's all wrapped in dances. I guess he liked that so much, um, and that kind of tipped me off. I was like, wait, so the homecoming is really about a homecoming dance, which makes sense. But I always thought of it more as like. Spider-Man Homecoming to the Marvel Universe. Obviously, I think that's the major, you know, if it, the Homecoming Dance is the major theme of the film for that subtitle, then him coming home to the Marvel Universe is like the sub-subtitle. Like, it's, you gotta read between the lines to get that. <laughs> Batman as Birdman as Vulture. Uh, Michael Keaton plays Adrian Toomes, who is the Vulture. I really, really liked him here. He was very menacing, very threatening. Uh, it, all the ways that kind of Bruce Wayne was in that first Batman movie when he was looking at the Joker and he was like, do you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts! Um, that kind of thing, but that level of menace, but just toned way down to where it was almost like simmering the whole time, um, you know, until it, it reached a boiling point in that one scene, which I don't want to talk about because that, that twist is... Ugh! Can't... I don't want to say anymore. He was really good. Uh, I think he's gonna be the collective favorite Marvel villain from here on out besides Loki. Um, I'm hoping Thanos can do something with that. They really need Thanos to pop in uh, Infinity War. So we'll go from there. Um, the suit, same Spider-Man suit you saw in uh, Captain America Civil War. Loved it. I love the training wheels protocol. The, uh, you know, that gag, the babysitter mode where it, you know, video records, or baby monitor mode, it records everything through his lenses, stuff like that. It's really cool. Although, when they, when they switched that on, I was, I was a little bit, you know, I kind of feel like he's just another Tony Stark now. If he's got an AI that he's talking to the entire time, I mean, I know that they want him to, like, talk to somebody. I feel like maybe since he was investigating things they didn't know where for him to go so they probably wanted him to do that but that was very interesting so and oh the secondary suit that he gets at the end or doesn't get or does he get it I, I won't say that is atrocious that was an ugly ugly suit Ugh, I hope that thing does not make an appearance in any more movies other than just that the spider, while I'm a fan of the large spider designs, just the gold in there that Iron Man worked in because that's his motif, just did not look uh, great at all on, on Spider-Man. It really looked like armor more than it did an actual suit. But so him talking to the AI in a suit just felt, it just felt like we'd seen it before. Everything else in this movie was a nice way of uh, updating Spider-Man for the modern age, tying him in to the Marvel Universe, but the AI thing has been done. Iron Man's done it in, what, Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, Avengers 1 and 2, and so, yeah, so six movies we've had Iron Man in, talking to AI. Um, the gags with Iron Man flying the suit over and being in India and him not being in the suit, those are fun. But him, Spider-Man having an AI, just not a fan of that. So hopefully they figure out a, uh, 
you know, a way to tone it down a little bit and not have Karen, as he called her, talk to her the entire time during the movie like he did once he turned her on. Um, the Shocker, he was in it for a little bit, and I, I like the way that they kind of set him up for a future movie. Um, you know, everybody's left alive at the end of this Spider-Man film, which is unusual for Spider-Man films, because I think the last five, the villains have died, right? You had uh, Green Goblin died, Doc Ock died, um, Harry Green Goblin died, I think Venom died as well, uh, Lizard I think died, and who was this, the other one? That Green Goblin died in the Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I think Electro died, or something as well. So. You know, it's nice that they, they left him alive, because honestly in the comics, Spider-Man doesn't kill anybody, obviously. It's not his one rule, like Batman or some people think Superman's rule is, but it's one of his traits that they all, these villains keep, always keep coming back. And I love the little things to Mac Gargan with the scorpion. He's got the, the tattoo on here, and I like that actor a lot. Um, so I'm hoping that they, they push that in the next movie, you know, and uh, we'll have the Scorpion come after Spider-Man and maybe the Vulture will come out too and then you know build to a Sinister Six. I feel like that's where Sony really wants to go uh, based on the fact that they were trying to set it up in the last movie series so we'll see but Spider-Man Homecoming is a great movie you guys should go definitely go check it out and see it if you haven't already if you did let me know what you thought about it down below and I really like this movie I, my buddy Harry didn't like it as much as some of the older ones but I have to say that I really enjoyed it and um, I would give this four and a half out of five stars. This was near perfect, um, except for a couple of things. But man, oh man, this movie left me smiling, laughing, surprised, and just and really good. And the the end teaser, uh, the like the after all the credits teaser, um, that was that was funny and mean at the very same time. And if you know the film, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this edition of BK's Bullets. We have more content coming up. And I will see you guys in the funny pages.